Hello. Uh, what I'm going to show today is uh, how to georeference uh, a raster image uh, into uh, an ArcMap project. Before we start with the raster image, uh, we have to set a couple of things uh, on an empty ArcGIS project. So the very first thing we have to do is set a coordinate system for the project if it's not done yet. So we go to view, data frame properties, and I select, uh, in this case, GC, uh, GCS WGS 1984. Apply and OK. So now my coordinate system is set. The second thing we need is uh, a, um, uh, a toolbar, which is the georeferencing toolbar. So I, I go to customize. Customize, Toolbars, and I look down to the georeferencing toolbar. Now we see that uh, this toolbar appears, and I can put it here in this, in this part, so it's going to be accessible. So now what we can do is load our raster file to georeference that I have it here. Uh, we will receive this message, unknown spatial reference, because, uh, as I said before, this raster has to be um, has to be georeferenced to its uh, coordinate. So you see that this is a, a raster map of uh, northern Germany, this town of Bremerhaven in northern Germany, and uh, uh, there are some coordinates up here. There, there is a grid with some coordinates up here, and uh, uh, we we know that we are at the more or less at the harbor of, Bremer, of Bremerhaven. This is. Uh, 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 the harbor side of Bremerhaven. So there are two ways to uh, georeference this image. The first one is a little bit easier, but it's also less precise. Let's gonna look at that first, and then we look at the second one. So first of all, to do this very simple georeferencing, uh, we need some base map of, upon which we georeference this uh, data set. So we're going to add base map here. You need an internet connection to do this. So we can go and click on imagery and load the imagery onto the image. It takes a bit, but uh, basically it's going to load uh, a uh, ASRI Word image into our data set. There it is. So you see now very clearly that while this is in real world coordinates, this image is is not in real world coordinates. So what we have to do is take this image and put it in its correct place by rotating and by um, stretching it and by uh, resizing it. Uh, luckily, ArcGIS uh, gives you the possibility to do this uh, through the georeferencing uh, toolbar. So you see that something changed since we uh, first started. Uh, before this side was blank, now we have a uh, the GRF image automatically recognized here. You should pay attention because if you have several raster images, uh, you will have several values here. So you should pay attention that you are working on the correct one. So uh, way number one to georeference uh, is to look for points that I can recognize in this map, also in uh, the other, uh, in, in the aerial imagery. Let's see how we can do that. First of all, we go here. And uh, we add what it's called, what are called control points. So basically, these are points that I can recognize uh, in both my original source image, uh, that is this map, and uh, the aerial photo. I'm going to give it a try. This is a little bit of a trial and error, uh, but I can do something like this this cape. So you see that if I click on it, I have this point, which is called one in here. Now what I have to do is navigate to the second image and try to find the same point. So I go here, zoom in, I'm gonna try. It's gonna take a bit because it, it's gonna take a bit to, to load with my internet connection, but I am going to try to navigate to Bremerhaven. I should have chosen some labels, but... Let me do this with labels instead of, so we have some nice labels as well, instead of just, instead of just having the base map, we are going to have also some label here. So we see that now we have Bremerhaven down there. There it is. So I'm going towards the harbor of Bremerhaven. 
and I'm going to try, I'm going to make a wild guess here. I think that cape that I was looking at is this one. So I take back again the contour points and you see that I have the first contour point is still, is still here. And I can basically say, okay, this point is more or less here. You see that something changed and what changed is uh, if I go here and I, I say zoom to layer, what changed is that now the image has changed its place. Now let's see if I can find another uh, point. I need at least three points. Uh, I could do something like probably this one. Let's see if I can find this small embayment here. So now for the sake of seeing, I just do this. Again, it takes a little bit for it to load. I go back to the same area and I'm looking for that little embayment on the northern side of Bremerhaven, which might, might or might not be. Uh, it's probably, that's very hard to recognize, but it's probably this one. Let's see if, if we can make it work. Okay, now you see that my image has been rotated and it, it basically looks like I am, I am already getting it in the, in the right spot. So let's see if I can find at least a third, a third one where I, where I can pin a point. It should be a little bit far away. So maybe something like something like this. Very hard to recognize, but maybe this one I can recognize should be this one. So I open it again. So you see that now the map has been has been stitched to this, but we're not happy yet. Uh, because we need to uh, make it a little bit more stitch it again. So probably there was some point that, that it's not really correct in here. But basically by, by keeping, by uh, continuing to add these points and by continuing, let me add some transparency display symbology. I'm going to make it a little bit transparent here. Hmm? No, I can't make it transparent. Ah, yeah, let's see. I'm going to make it a 60% transparent and see what we have. It's not very good, but also not extremely bad. So we can keep adding points here of places that I can recognize both in the map and uh, and uh, in the in the aerial photo. Uh, so then I can really uh, put this map on top of um, on top of of the aerial aerial picture. So this is the first uh, uh, way to do this, uh, the first way to do a quick georeferencing of a map. Uh, but as you see, it's very difficult to, uh, especially in natural environments or in environments where you do not have a lot of information, it's actually very difficult to uh, make the two maps coincide. You probably need much, many more points uh, and you probably need to be much more accurate. One thing you can do is to go here in the, there it is. And here you have all the points and you can try to exclude some of the points to see if your georeferencing improves. Oh. To, in, if, to see if your georeferencing improves. So as you delete some points, you might realize that maybe you misplaced some of the points and then you see that your georeferencing is changing according to uh, according to where you uh, are 
uh, which point you are excluding. So this is the first, first way to do this. Now, let's have a look at the second way to do this, which is much more precise and can be done if you have, as you have in this case, coordinates in uh, um, the image. So I'm gonna open a blank file. So we delete everything. And I'm again, uh, takes a bit. Okay. And I'm again adding the georeference image, again getting the same uh, warning. And this is here we are again at the same, um, at the first point. So, what we can do here is that uh, uh, as contrapoints to this image, we can add the coordinates that we have, that we have located here. And the map will be put automatically into uh, the correct place. So, it's again the same uh, um, the same thing I have to do. I have to go here, maybe I zoom in a little bit, and I take this first point. Tuck. Now, I don't have anything to pin this point to, but what do I have? I have the link table. And here I want to input an X and Y. So this is asking me uh, where this point, what are the coordinates of this point in the real world? Uh, there's a little hurdle here because um, here you see that uh, um, the coordinates are in uh, degrees and minutes. And instead here, the coordinates are asked into um, decimal degrees. It's not a big problem because uh, there are many services such as this uh, letlong.net service that can help you in translating coordinates in uh, uh, from degrees, minutes, and seconds into um, uh, oh, into um, latitude and uh, longitude in decimal degrees. So the latitude here is uh, 5336. So 53. 36 and the longitude here is 8 and 20 8 and 20 so i convert them to decimal degrees seconds it's zero convert so it's 53.6 and 8.33 53.6 and 8.33 Okay, and so you see that your um, your map has been updated. It's basically telling you that uh, on the raster file, the X and Y are 87 and minus 60, and uh, instead on uh, the uh, real world, these coordinates are 833 and 53.6. So let's, go, let's do the second. There you go, right click, input X and Y. Now, the Y is going to be the same, so we have 53.6, and the X, we have to calculate it from letlong.net, 840, so 8.66, good. So you see that your map has already been uh, put somewhere. Uh, and we can find it again by zooming to the layer. There it is. So now we can put the third one. Tuck, right click, input X and Y. I can, before I do this, I can show the table. So I, I see it here, input X and Y. So the X coordinate will be the same as the first one. So it's again, 8.33 and the y coordinate is 53.24 that I calculate. 53.24, 53.4. Okay, great. And this is my map uh, located onto geographic coordinates. If I want to have a look, uh, if if this is correct, 
uh, what I can do is again load an imagery with labels. I wait for a second. Ah. Doesn't uh, I didn't I didn't set up I didn't set up the coordinate system, but I can do this here. View data frame properties WGS84. Okay, and now I can do this. Good. Let's see how precise we were. So this is not too bad. I can give it some transparency, like a 50% transparency. And I see that this went almost exactly onto the right spot. Now it's, it's very nice because uh, um, I could add some, uh, uh, some more points into this and try to make it a little bit more precise. For example, if I see that this georeferencing is a little bit off, let's say, I don't know where, probably. It's not too off because the coordinates are quite correct. But we can, you know, for the sake of trying out, we can do something like this. I take another point. I see it's not exactly on the shore, so I put it on the shore. And the georeferencing will update with this new point that I put in. Okay, and you see that here you have, instead of three, you have four points. So um, there are many uh, different uh, things that actually go into the, uh, into the georeferencing and the ArcGIS manual is very, uh, is very complete about this, especially the transformation you can apply. First order polynomial is the one we use when we don't have a lot of points, uh, but then there are many more, um, many more, uh, projections that we can use. For example, this one adjust will uh, uh, apply another algorithm to, um, to make the transformation uh, from, the, uh, from the first file to the other. And projective transformation is another one. Uh, these options will become available as soon as you add points. For example, for a second order polynomial, you need more points. And for a third order polynomial, you need even more points. Um, again, this is uh, so now you have this map uh, georeferenced into uh, into a real world coordinates. But what you have to remind is another thing before you close everything. Uh, this is not saved yet. So if you were to reload again the GeoRef map, what you will find uh, is that it will go again uh, in the same uh, place uh, uh, as as initially as where we had it initially. So I would suggest to do two things. The first one is whenever you're happy with your points, just to save them. So you're happy with these points. Uh, by the way, you, here you can also see that you have some uh, um, um, some ideas of the residuals. So the, the lower these ones, uh, the better it is. And you can also um, you can also adjust uh, from the table actually the polynomial. And you can also pick degrees, minutes, and seconds or decimal degrees from from here. So when you're happy about your point, you can just save the save the points. So let's let's do that. I'm gonna go into the into the folder that I that I prepared and I save control points there. Great. But this still does not save does not save the um, the georeferenced image. To save the georeferenced image as you see it here, you have to go here, data, right click data, export data and the export raster data set opens. So what you, what you can do is basically save your, um, uh, your raster file as a new raster file that has the uh, information embedded onto it. Um, we can select the TIFF format. And uh, I wanted to see if I can give it uh, a special reference first. Uh, I think I, okay, one step back. You see here that if I try to save, there is no special reference. So this means that it's gonna save the raster, but you will still have uh, the warning 
uh, that, that you saw at the beginning uh, that tells you that the raster has no spatial reference. So let's try to give it a spatial reference. I think, hmm, no, I cannot do it from here. Okay, let's do it like that. Right click, export data. And I'm gonna try to save it in this way. GRF raster. Okay, GRF raster. And the format is a TIFF format. No compression types. Oh, I want to save it in GIS database. Okay. Okay. Now I saved it, and you see that I have my raster file, uh, my raster file here. So now this file has uh, the the coordinates, the correct coordinates. Let me just remove it and open it up. You see that though I still have this uh, uh, this unknown spatial reference error, but it plots correctly. So how do I get rid of that spatial reference error? Uh, I need to basically tell ArcGIS that I want to uh, th that I I know which coordinates has this raster. So uh, I go here in define projections. I I I hit on the search toolbar here and I'm going to define projection data management. So this is a tool set that allows me to um, write the coordinates, uh, the coordinate system onto an ArcGIS data frame. So I have my GRF raster here. Okay. The coordinate system, you see that it tells me it's unknown, but I can click here and I know I've been working in WGS84. So I select WGS84 and I hit OK. You see that it's blocked because it's working. Now I can close my search bar. And as soon as it's finished, it's going to tell me that uh, the coordinates have been assigned. And I'm going to show you what it means. It usually takes a little bit. Okay, so it's done. You see that it's uh, now again available. I can right click, go into the properties. And if you remember before here in the source, I had unknown and now instead I have the spatial reference correctly assigned. Let's see if everything went well. So I just remove it again. I just add it again and it should not give me that error anymore. So this is how you uh, can uh, georeference any image, any aerial picture, any um, image that does not have a coordinate system onto a very well-defined uh, uh, place on Earth. Uh, there are many uh, things that go into the um, understanding of georeferencing. ArcGIS has a lot of uh, um, help tips for this, uh, but the general topic is, or the general procedure is the one I showed you. Um, this is it.